Let's kick off the new year with some efficient workflow when you're trying to fit a shirt or bodice. I got a question from one of my members of my J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider group about fitting her shirt pattern that she was working on. And I think the big gist of it was she wasn't sure if she was, you know, making the right adjustments or maybe if she, if she was even starting at the right point. What I thought I would do is create a guide that will help you navigate where to start and how to progress efficiently through fitting a shirt pattern. So this first guide is going to kick off a new series, and this guide is going to focus on fitting the shoulder, neck, and upper back. Now, why am I picking those features or key areas to fit first? If you look at the shirt I'm wearing, it's hanging from my shoulders. Now, this is a shirt jacket, so it's, it's big, it's off the shoulder, but basically, a shirt needs to sit on your shoulders properly. The length of the shoulder, the slope of the shoulder needs to agree with you, and then there are some body-specific things that come into play as well. So following along with me, you know that I have a lot of tutorials on my channel that can show you how to fit different areas of all sorts of garments. And if you know what you need, it's pretty easy to find it and then use it to fit your pattern. But if you're not sure where to start, I thought this would be helpful. So we're gonna start at the beginning. After you pick your best starting size, which you're gonna use your high bust measurement in most cases, then you're going to trace that size and I'm gonna show you how to prep the pattern before you cut out your first muslin. And this is gonna be a very similar process as my pants fitting, where we'll make some body specific adjustments to the pieces before we cut out our muslin. And I think that will make quicker work of fine tuning and fitting the rest of the pattern. So I was looking at some illustrations that I drew in Illustrator, and it occurred to me that the very top of the pattern, like through the tip of the shoulder and the first few inches of the upper back, I'm calling that the blue zone because that's the area that has to get fit first and all the things that you would fit in the top of the pattern pieces affect what's going on below. So I made a new zone for all of those areas and I'm calling that the pink zone. So going forward, the top of the pattern will be blue zone and then right below the tips of the shoulders and upper back, the rest of the pattern is pink zone. So this first fit guide is going to focus on the blue zone, shoulders, neck, and upper back. And I also ordered the adjustments or the things to look at in a logical order to make it easier for you to make those adjustments and get that first muslin cut and sewn up so you can use that to fine tune the pattern further. The first thing we're gonna look at is length of shoulder. Now you might be thinking, isn't it true that you do vertical adjustments first? The answer to that is usually yes. It's very important to get key areas of your pattern to agree with you vertically, and then you work on the ease or horizontal adjustments after. Because if, let's say, you know, the bust is in the right spot, then you will know if you need more ease or not. So it's important to get it correct vertically first. You know, adjusting your pattern vertically is usually the first step. But I'm gonna start with shoulder length first because if the pattern you're working with has a significantly longer or shorter shoulder than what you need, that can cause fitting issues and wrinkles and things that you might not want to deal with in your fit muslin. So how do you adjust your pattern for shoulder length before you make a muslin? So I'm going to take my shirt off here so you can see my shoulders. And basically you can see from the tip, from the edge of my neck to the tip of my shoulder, that's my shoulder length here. I can easily measure that, but if you look at this pattern piece I have in front of me here, you can see I've already drawn on it. 
to start showing you what to do, but I can't measure or compare this shoulder to this shoulder because we don't know how wide that neckline is. If you're working with a pattern that has a crew neck that's right up against the base of your neck, then you can compare the shoulder length to the shoulder length of the pattern. But if it's more open, then you need to figure out a different way to measure your shoulder length on the pattern and compare it with your shoulder length. So what I figured out was if you measure your pattern from center front to the armhole edge and compare that to your body measurement, you can get pretty darn close. So you can see here what I did was I extended my center front up so I'd have a center front edge to measure with. And then I'm gonna measure across from the stitching line straight through to center front. And I can make note of what that measurement is. We're gonna pretend it's seven and a half inches for this example because this is a tiny little pattern and now I'm gonna measure me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my ruler or tape measure and I'm literally gonna measure from armhole to armhole seam on a shirt that's close fitting and the armhole is sitting where it should. So right off the tip of the shoulder here. I'm gonna take this full measurement and I'm gonna divide it in half. Let's say it's 13 inches, okay? So if I divide that in half, I'm gonna get six and a half. So I'm six and a half, the pattern is seven and a half. So that means across the front of my shirt, I'm gonna have two inches of ease. Now, if I'm making a fitted shirt, two inches is a little bit too much ease. So what would happen is if I sewed my muslin together, the shoulders would kind of fall off. So I'm going to leave a half an inch of ease here so that I have an inch total, which I think for my size is a good amount of ease. Smaller sizes, you might want to be a little bit smaller. Larger sizes, you might want a little bit more ease, but what I need to do now is I need to shorten my shoulder a half an inch so that I have an inch of ease across here and that's gonna bring my shoulder in. So that is the first thing I have covered in this fit guide. And I also included some illustrations in the fit guide that show you longer shoulder lengths, shorter shoulder lengths, average shoulder lengths. So you can sort of look at those and maybe compare to your shoulder in the mirror. I also have the illustrations to show you how to measure like I just shared here. And then I also show you how to shorten or lengthen the shoulder depending on the results you get. Just very quickly, what I would do here is if I wanna remove a half an inch, I'm gonna draw myself an L-shaped guideline like this. And then I'm gonna measure a half an inch over which I'm just gonna make it a quarter because this is a small scale pattern. But somewhere in the middle of your shoulder, this isn't exactly in the middle, but somewhere you know, in, in the shoulder to the side of the armhole where it's relatively straight. You don't wanna be in the curve down here. And then I'm just gonna cut that and slide it over. Now you're gonna have to do that for the front and the back. But basically now what you've done is you've changed the length of the shoulder before you've cut out your fit muslin. So I'm just gonna put a piece of tape here to hold it. Okay, and then to true up the armhole edge, I'm just gonna start down here and just gradually meet up with the new position of the armhole like this. So I've brought that in. So that is the first adjustment that I think will help you get a good start on fitting a shirt. The next thing we wanna talk about is slope. The slope of your shoulder is, what is the angle from the base of your neck to the tip of your shoulder? Some people have very angled shoulders or very sloped shoulders. Some people have straighter shoulders. You can see my shoulders are like linebacker shoulders. Getting that to fit properly is probably the most important thing in this fit guide because it's gonna allow the shoulder seam to sit 
on your body without it picking up either at the tip of the shoulder or at the neckline if it's not the right angle. And it's very hard to measure for that. So I came up with what I think is a pretty good idea for this. I'm just gonna take some paper and I'm gonna tape it here above my shoulder. Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add some extra allowance. Let's say we're gonna add an inch. So I'm just gonna follow the original edge of the shoulder like this, okay? So I've got this extra allowance here and I'm gonna do the same thing to the back. I'm gonna add that extra inch to my shoulder length. When I sew my fit muslin, I'm gonna sew it using the original um, stitching line right here because we don't wanna add it in or change it if we don't need to because here's the thing, there is no standard angle or slope on drafted patterns. Every pattern is gonna be different and sometimes it's very hard to tell what the slope is going to be because the slope is not the actual edge of the shoulder seam. It's what, what the seam does after it's sewn together. So remember, the back of your shirt wraps around your shoulder and meets the front shoulder and it's sewn here. So if you add extra to your front and back shoulder like this, sew it at the original using a long basting stitch, then you can take it out and literally pin it in place so that it's hanging properly off your shoulder. Then you can adjust the pattern pieces accordingly and you don't have to measure and you don't have to worry about, you know, figuring out how, you know, how much higher the base of your neck is versus the tip of your shoulder, for example. The important thing here is you wanna make sure you add the same amount to start with front and back so you can put those layers together and then I would mark the original stitching line, which if you're working with a pattern that's got a half an inch seam allowance, you're gonna be sewing an inch and a half from this top edge of the shoulder when you, you know, baste the shoulder together. That's gonna to make quick work of figuring out what the slope of the shoulder is and if you need to pick it up. If you have a very sloped shoulder, you're gonna to need to sew it deeper on this end. And if you've got more of a linebacker shaped shoulder like me or a straight shoulders, you might have to let it out, but you'll have the room to do it. And then once you fine tune that, cut off the extra and use those little pieces that you cut off of your fit muslin as templates to remove the extra paper off of your pattern. So that is the second thing that you can do to customize your pattern before you make your muslin. Um, and I have full instructions on how to do that in here as well. Now, if you take up the shoulder, making it more sloped, or if you make any changes on the armhole side of your shoulder seam, you're going to have to adjust your sleeve as well because the armhole gets shorter if I sew it in deeper, then it's a shorter armhole. And if I let it out, it's longer. So you're going to want to adjust your cap height to agree. So let's say we were working on a pattern and we had to take it up a little bit for a more slope. So I'm just gonna draw in here just to show you. So let's say after fitting the muslin, we realized we needed to take it in. Let's do just, let's say it's a little bit, a quarter inch, okay? So let's say the final position of our shoulder was here, okay? And then we have our seam allowance. So I'm just gonna draw the seam allowance back in. And remember, you're gonna do that front and back, whatever you end up with. I'm gonna cut this off, this extra right here, this little piece. Okay, and you can, this little piece is also gonna get cut off of your muslin. Okay, so now that's gone. But because we shortened the shoulder a quarter inch in the front, and let's say we did a quarter inch in the back, now we have to adjust the cap and make it shorter a quarter inch as well. To do that, you're simply going to draw a guideline across the cap 
and you're going to slash and overlap it. So I'm going to draw my little quarter inch right below like that. And then I'm just going to slide it down and true up the sleeve cap. I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to slide it down. And then I can true up the curved edges here. So basically, there's my shortened cap. Okay, and then basically I'm just going to take a little from below the adjustment and add it above the adjustment just a little bit to make a nice smooth cap like this. Alright, so that's how you would change the cap if you took in the tip of the shoulder. Now if I had to let it out, you would slash and overlap this. And again, all the information for this is in the fit guide. So I've taken care of slope of shoulder. The next thing that comes into play is, where is the ball of your shoulder? So I put a few illustrations for you to look at in the guide. And I basically show the ball of the shoulder can be, let me turn sideways so you can see. So it's either going to be in the center of your neck, where mine is, or your shoulder could come forward right? So the ball of your shoulder would be in front of you at the center of your neck, or it could be in the back. Okay, so it could be back there a little bit. So it's important to adjust your pattern for that as well, because think about it. If the ball of your shoulder is forward, then you need more length in the back and less length in the front to get that seam to sit squarely on the middle of your shoulder. And you'll be adjusting the outside edge. Now what I did was I put QR codes and links in the instructions to take you right to the tutorials that will show you how to fix this. So I'm showing you how to adjust for a forward shoulder. If you happen to have a backward ball of the shoulder, you would do the adjustments in reverse. So what I show in the front bodice, you would do in the back. What I show in the back, you would do in the front to shift it to the back. So there's a QR code for that or a link. And then also, once you do that, you do need to adjust your sleeve. So I included the YouTube link and the QR code for that as well. Now, if you've done all of this and you want to double check and make sure you have enough ease in your sleeve, you can walk your sleeve to check that. And I included a tutorial for that with a link and a QR code as well. So adjusting for the position of the ball of your shoulder is important because if you don't adjust for that, your shirt is either going to slide to the back or pull down in the front, depending on what's going on. Now, the next thing, which I find very interesting because sometimes position of neck and forward ball of shoulder can go hand in hand, meaning your neck could sit forward of your shoulder or it can be back and not centered. So again, I have the link and the QR code to show you how to adjust for that. And I put an illustration from the side view so you can see what that looks like. In this fit guide, I have line drawing showing you how to identify if you have these things. And I describe how you can look for them. So for example, if you're looking for the position of the ball of your shoulder or what your neck is doing, you're going to stand in front of a mirror from the side and you're going to look to see if you can see the angle of your shoulder. Another thing you can do is you can have someone take photos of you from the side and then you can look and see. The neck is the next issue. And again, I have the QR code or the link to go right to that tutorial to show you how to fix that. And then lastly, I'm also including a high round back body specific adjustment in this guide because that does affect the fit of the neckline in the back. It also affects the hem, but I want to deal with everything up in this top area in this first fit guide. So the way you can tell if you have a high round back 
You can take a picture from the side and see if you have a prominent curve at the base of your neck. Or if you notice that your necklines never make it up to the top, to the base of your neck, or if your hem is pulling up at the center back, those are indications that you have a high round back and you need more length along your center back seam. So again, I'm showing you how to adjust a pattern for a high round back that has a center back seam and also for a high round back on a pattern that does not have a center back seam. So those are the things that I would suggest doing to your pattern before you cut it out and make your fit muslin. After dealing with all of these things, if you have to adjust lower in what I'm calling the pink zone, you've already established the anchor for your top. So you can adjust other things and you want to go in order vertically for them. Once you get your fit muslin on, the next thing you're going to want to do is adjust the base of your armhole, the position of your bust start, your waist, and your hem. So those are things I'm going to deal with in the next fit guide in this series. But I wanted to get you started and I just want to sort of corral my tutorials into a guide so you don't have to go looking for them. Um, if you're trying to fit something, you can just work along with the guide. So those are the things that I would recommend adjusting before you cut out your fit muslin. If you know where your bust start needs to go and you want to adjust for that as well, you know, you can certainly go ahead and do that before you cut out your first muslin as well. But I'll be dealing with everything in the pink zone or anything below the tips of the shoulders and upper back in upcoming parts of the Fit Guide series. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial that I'm really hoping will help you make quicker work of fitting a top or a bodice. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will help you. I put a link to the guide in the description below so you can check that out if you'd like to. And I just want to thank everybody for following along with me and, you know, fitting along with me. So thank you guys for watching and have a lovely rest of your day.